Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the K2 Geometric. This board features K2's twin combination camber, which is 95% camber with a small little rocker out at the nose and the tail. So basically, very minimal cam rocker. You're gonna get that load and pop of traditional camber, but you got this little micro rocker that'll help you with presses, butters, and give you a little bit of ease of entry in and out of turns. This board is available in 144, 148, 152, 156, 151 wide, 154 wide, 157 wide. I rode this board at Arapahoe Basin on a sunny bluebird day, cooler temps, you had slushy snow, chunder snow, creamy snow, kind of just a mix of all things spring-like, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label Bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. All right, so make no qualms about it, this board's soft. Now, I'm pretty sure if I was riding a bigger board than a 152, it wouldn't have been as soft, but this board's still soft. And what you get with this board is a smooth, consistent flex from tip to tail. And that's perfect for what this board is. You know, there's realistically only two stiffer spots and that's right underfoot, right at the insert pack. So you get a lot of torsional flex to it. Now, when it comes to stability, you can kind of throw that out the window. You're gonna get a lot of chatter in the tips. You're gonna feel it underfoot and really run it out terrain. You feel it through the middle of the board. It gets kicked out, it gets bucked. You just have to be aware of it. So keep your knees bent. But but then again, this board's designed for jibbing, playing around. So don't expect the most stable thing on the planet. With this board being predominantly camber, you do get pop out of it. It's nice, it's easy, it's predictable. Now with that softer flex, it's pretty much already loaded up the second you're strapped in. So you do get that little bit of rebound out of it and it's easy to engage, it never fights you. You can just boost and snap off anything in your path and never really worry about it. Now when it comes to jumps, I didn't get to hit any. This time of the year, with the season, the way it was, A Basin didn't put up any jumps. I get it, it happens, that's fine. So, with how soft this board was flexing everything, I would probably stick to small, maybe medium jumps if you're feeling ballsy. The good thing is that pop is consistent so you don't have to worry about it. When it comes to buttering and jibbing with this board, this is where it truthfully shines. You got that micro rocker out in the tip and the tail, and that's the sweet spot you want to be leveraging your weight out on when you're doing a butter. You can feel it lock in, and there's a little bit of fight from the camber of this board, but it's not enough to overwhelm you so that you can just get out, swivel around on your nose or tail, do whatever you need, and still get that tiny amount of pop from the camber. And when it comes to jibbing, the same can be said about this. You lock into nose and tail presses to the point you're like, am I even pressing? Because that board is so soft and you're flexing it, but you still retain that little bit of pop out of the end of the feature. Now, when you go sideways, this board does everything it can to not fully clap out. I'm not saying you can't cause it to clap out if you come down hard on a rail. It's just doing everything in its power not to clap out. So with all that, it does wrap around the feature. You feel it hug it aggressively, and it still retains that little bit of pop you need to get out of the end of it. The edge-to-edge -edge transmission and control on this board is very quick and nimble. It's when you really start to drive this board that you lose any of its grip and its power. It will fold in the tail. It's just not designed for it. It's a little bit better on edge than the world piece. It feels a little more locked in. And it's one of those boards that's great for those setup carves going into a feature, or if you need to rail a turn around a family of stupid fat skier people that got into the park, it'll have you covered. But when you're trying to really lay it over and push into it, it just folds. It doesn't have that power or that response that you need. So you wanna keep your carves light and mellow more than anything with it. Who's this board for? The Rail Focus Park Guy. So this board is essentially the replacement for the World Wide Weapon, although in my mind it's a little more playful and has a little more snap to it. And that's fine. That's what this board's for. If you want to butter and hit rails, that's great. But there are limitations with this board. You'll notice that when you're on edge. You'll notice it when you try to hit bigger features. It's just not what it's actually meant for. So keep that in mind. Comparable boards, the Solomon Sleepwalker, the Rome Gangplank, the Rosinal Retox. Binding recommendations, the K2 lineup, 
The Burton Mission. This has been my review of the K2 Geometric. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.